Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Gunplug Garage coming at you with a new unboxing video. And today, we're going to do something a little different where we're going to unbox some multiple kits here because I think we have enough time in these unboxing videos. So let's take a look at these newer released P Bandai kits. And here we have it. We have the Heingra and we have Gundam Liferith mass production version. Now, both of these are from the Witch from Mercury series, and they're both from Episode Zero, the prologue. So the Gundam Liferith mass production version we've seen quite a bit in the third party realm. There's been some 3D printed companies making parts for this to easily turn the original Liferith into the mass production version. And then the Heingra is basically the Heindry Sturm. We're gonna unbox both of these and we're gonna take a look and I'll give you my first impressions. So without further ado, I'm gonna put the camera up and let's take a look. And we'll start with the Liferith mass production version because I know that's the more popular pick of this episode. So for the Liferith mass production version, we have seven runners. Starting with the A runner, this is basically exactly the same as the original Liferith that we got as the first kit for the Witch from Mercury line. So these are the pauldron armors, the leg armors, feet, more feet, chest, back, Front of torso for the permit area. Little sneaky pro tip here, I like to take some quick shine and go over this part and that makes it gloss really, really well. So it's quick and easy to apply, doesn't take very long. The front visor, I think that's for the eyes or the V-fin type area. A shoulder connection, the eyes, which is very nice that they're separated, another shoulder connection, and then a beam effect for the gun. So nothing different on a runner, just slightly different colors. Here we have the B runner and it's in this very darkish, dark navy. It's a very, very dark navy and it's all frame piecing. So we got hands here, shoulder, and then the other part of the shoulder. So this goes down to the bicep and this connects to the chest, the elbow area. I don't remember what that is. This is neck in the head, and then more torso pieces, so bottom of the torso, top of the torso, and then center chest area. There's some leg framing, and obviously some thruster bells here. The knees, which these are C-clip, and that can be a little contentious sometimes. The ankle joints, the feet, which is also C-clip, and then the back of the knees. So again, nothing new on this B1 runner. This is all basically inner framing, if you will, for the Liferith. Here we have the C runner in this skyish blue color. And this should all be armor pieces. So I'm familiar with where these go. This is going to be foot armor and then the top of the foot armor. So this is like shin guard armor. This will be back of the feet ankle armor. This should be the thigh if I remember correctly. That's the thigh. And then this is the upper thigh armor. So this is like the thigh waist connection. More thigh waist connection armor. Here we have shoulder armor and then again shoulder armor. Not sure where these go but these are all bicep armors. And then the forearm, top of the forearm top of the hands, and then I'm unsure where these go. Now, I've built every single Witch from Mercury kit, and just by looking at this runner of a kit I built almost a year and a half ago, it's pretty easy to see the design philosophy of this entire line once you've built them all. Towards the end there, the last couple kits I was building from the Witch from Mercury line, I really barely even used the manual to put them together. Mostly just does a double check for accuracy of the build, but it's a very intuitive and straightforward line. And that's what I love about the Witch from Mercury line. It's just really good. It's really easy for beginners and it's just a nice relaxing build. Here we have the D runner and this is the last runner from the original kit. This is the lower torso piece and this should be like the rear waist armor. This is the center waist, top of the head, top of the head 
neck collar area. That's also part of the neck on the back of the framing for the neck. Chest armor and then lower chest armor. So this goes on the sides. So this is the last of the armor pieces. And this looks really, really good. I, I absolutely adore the coloring on this kit. So here we have our first new runners. It's F1 and F2. And F2 is just a second wing binder. So we're really not gonna look at this because everything we need to look at is on F1. Now we do have some different head sculpting here on F1. So that tells me that we're gonna use this rather than the one included on the kit. And then this is a different type of backpack and maybe even a different chest connection. But all of this should be the wing binder and then the funnel type weapons. I don't remember what they're called in the Witch from Mercury series, but they're basically just funnels that you control with your mind. And we're gonna have a lot, so like the whole salvo here. It's probably two halves put together, but I'd have to double check with the manual. So it looks like we have five funnels per pod, if my math is correct. And just a cursory, real quick check. None of this new stuff appears to be undergated, which is fine and to be expected as the original kit isn't undergated. What I do really enjoy about the Witch from Mercury line, you can even see this on the Darabaldi, is that they do have this inner framing here. So you can see that inner trussing there on the pod, which is normally something you wouldn't see, but if this splits open, putting a nice gray in there to contrast to this blue might look really good. So if you paint that blue in there, gray, and then like where this other framing in there, a darker gray, that would look really, really nice. But that about does it for both F runners. The final new runner is the G runner. And as I said, we got five. So it looks like it looks like five pods on each side. So 10 roughly. So this probably sandwiches together like one on top of the other sandwiches, you know, some new venting for the chest. And then this is probably supporting for the pods. We have an entirely new rifle here, which is nice. I do like the look of this rifle better than the really, really short rifle of the original Lifrith. And then appears to be just more chest and binder armor. So that does it for the Lifrith mass production version. We'll take one quick look at the sticker sheet and it's very small as you can see, just the Permet score, the eyes and camera sensor, and then all these little green parts for the funnels. These right here go in the knee joint, so nothing really crazy. I'll probably actually use these as there's a decent enough ridge there for these stickers so that they blend into a panel line, similar to the original Lifrith. I, I used the pink stickers on Lifrith and it, it looks fine. It's holding up no issues. So I'll probably end up using these just to have a quick, easy build that I really, <laughs> you know, can just bang out quickly. It's just something to relax with, you know? So that does it for the Lifrith mass production version. Let's get into the Heingra. Here we have all the runners for the Heingra. There are six runners here. If you really wanted to count the beam saber, which I don't. So there's really only five runners here for the main build. This is the A runner for the Heingra. So this is all chest and then all bicep area. So really, nothing crazy here and this is old so this originally belongs to the hindry here we have the b runner again from the hindry as well and here we have the arm cuff links the top of the feet the upper thigh armor the rear skirt the chest piece top of the hands top of the shoulder armor and then the front and back of the shoulder armor. This I believe is front chest, front skirt, and then the shield and head pieces. So I do apologize, this is more Hindry Sturm. So that does it for the B runner. It's all Hindry recycled parts really, nothing new and nothing crazy, just in this more militaristic brown color. Here we have the C runner for the Hyngra, and this is all inner, inner framing pieces, and this is all reused from the original Hindry. Um, I even think this is a little, yeah, this is all from the original Hindry, because the difference between the 
The big gear models is the feet. So basically all this is the same as the big gear models, but the feet are a little bit different for the most part. It's been a year since I built the Witch from Mercury kit, so please forgive me if I'm a little bit incorrect on that. So we have some thrusters here. That's probably for the backpack. And then here we have all the arm connections and the interior arm connections, the hands here, and the bicep joints here. This is the chest connection for the bicep. So these two pieces go into here and they swing out a little bit. Definitely a very intuitive design. I do really love the Witch from Mercury line. It's, it's very, very good. So as we said, this is inner chest and this is the top collar area where the head will connect to. The head connector. And this is for the ab crunch, if I recall correctly. I don't recall what this is for. I don't remember. I think this is for the legs. Here we have the shoulder armors, which we don't have any stickers for. We did have stickers for this before on the Hindry and the Hindry Sturm. So that's kind of interesting that there's no stickers for these little areas. So that's interesting. Here we have the thigh to waist connector, which goes into these parts, which go into the waist. So these are the upper thighs. And then here we have the upper thigh. Uh, I believe this is upper thigh, upper thigh, lower calf. So this is like the knee joint here. This is the back of the thighs, front leg armor, and then rear leg armor. And then the two foot pads. So this is all old recycled hindry armor, but that is to be expected. Here we have the D1 runner, and this is all that's different between the Hindry Storm and this. So this is a new runner just for the Hindra. And we have a new rifle here and a new shield. So shield piece here, shield piece here, and then the back of the shield piece, as well as a different backpack. I assume this is the shield connector that goes onto the arm. This is probably all rifle bits. This is the cockpit piece and then the helmet visor. Looks like we have a different upper helmet sculpt here. And that's really it for the curious people. Again, no undergating, so this will just be snip and send. You, you don't have to spend two or three extra cuts to get rid of undergating. And this is all that's new. So basically, all you're buying this premium Bandai kit for is this D1 runner. This is all that's new. And then finally, the E2 runner which is from the Hindry Sturm. So we have the backpack cannon here for the Sturm, the original backpack for the Sturm, the original rifle for the Sturm, the shield connections for the Sturm, one beam saber, the Sturm backpack connector, and then the Sturm boosters. So as you can see here, it can be built for multiple specifications. So you do build the original gun, you do build the backpack gun, and you can build it for Either designation, the manual shows it with two beam sabers and no backpack guns. So you do have some variation here in the design. So it's this is basically a Hindry Sturm with some new parts added to it and nothing really too crazy. And we really don't get anything too crazy, just a new shield and a new gun. In an effort to collect them all, I did purchase this. Um, otherwise I probably would have passed on it as it's a design that you really only see very briefly in the show. I, a lot of people are asking where Porados is. Um, I too am wondering where Porados is, if we got this. Uh, but this was obviously an easier kit to turn out seeing as they already had mold reuse with the Hindry and the Hindry Storm. So why not just do a shield and a gun and say, okay, we'll just put it on P Bandai for those people who actually really want it. So as I was saying, with the, Hind with the Hindra, we do not have these little foil stickers for the upper shoulder piece. This is the Hindry Sturm, which I actually thought was a pretty decent sleeper hit from the Witch from Mercury line. I did really enjoy my time building this kit a lot. It's ever so slightly limited in articulation, but that's fine. Like there's no double elbow press, but it is still a very cool looking design in my opinion. I think it looks very formidable with its different armaments. Um, this isn't a review of the Hindry Storm. This is just me comparing kits. So, so we're getting a different rifle and a different 
shield and a different head sculpt with the Hyngra. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna beat this in terms of my taste. I may still like the Hindry Sturm the best out of the Hindry line, but I did think this was a sleeper hit from the Witch from Mercury line because we got the Hindry first and it's kind of a, a, it's kind of a, it's a little lame looking of a design in my opinion. Um, but then we got this and I was like, okay, this is way cooler. So I do think Bandai was a little slow with the mass production Lifrith model. I don't think they anticipated it to be as much of a fan favorite as it was. People seem to really, really love that design. I mean, we got so many 3D printed little copies of it. It's everywhere. There's, if you look hard enough, you can find the parts to print your own or buy the resin printed pieces and get them shipped to you. So it, it already kind of existed out there, but now it's in the proper colors. It's an official Bandai kit. You don't have to deal with painting a whole kit. And that can be a whole different can of worms if you're not as experienced of a builder because painting kits is a totally different totally different than just straight build. So it's nice that the straight build demographic was able to get a mass production Lifrith model without having to break the bank on painting supplies and things such as that. Without further ado, that's gonna do it for me. So we got basically a new version of the Hindry Sturm and we got a new version of the Lifrith. So let me know which one you want me to talk about first on the channel, if you even want me to talk about it. If you say, Joe, I really don't care about either of these kits, fine. We'll just, we'll just move on and review something else. But and I am pretty interested to open up the mass production version, get that built and take a closer look at it in its fully built form. But that's gonna do it for me. I hope you guys have a great day. So stay safe, have fun and happy building.